All set. All right, Doug Grom here with Neff Automation. I've uh, spent the last day here um, doing some training, Universal, some other Mir, uh, Kawasaki, and one of the coolest products that we got trained on uh, was the Robotique Palletizer. And I'm gonna let Jeff talk a little bit about that. So what we have right here in front of us is the Robotique PE20 Palletizer with a Universal Robots UR20 on top of it. This is one of the latest products that Universal Robots and Robotique have released. Um, really popular at a lot of customers that have issues with uh, employees stacking boxes all day long. We can handle boxes about 40 pounds with this unit. We have another unit through Robotique that can handle boxes close to 60 pounds on the payload. Um, has two sides to allow it to palletize automatically on the left-hand side when that's done. It'll switch over to the right-hand side, giving your material handlers time to come back and remove that pallet. Uh, it's a very customizable system. We're gonna show a very simple setup today, and Doug's gonna take us through that uh, setup procedure. Awesome, thanks a lot, Jeff. And by the way, so he is the robotics uh, uh, product manager here at Neff Automation. So with that, and he did a great job training. So with that, we're gonna jump into uh, start to finish programming this. So when I say start to finish, I really mean it. We're gonna start off with a new program and I'm gonna go ahead and save those changes. And so we've, we've got nothing here. So in the very beginning, I'm gonna go to UR caps and we're gonna go down up. Oh, I, I got some uh, fat, finger fat fingers there. there, but we're gonna go down to the palletizer. And so automatically you'll see that it loads up everything we need to figure out for this palletizing app. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit start over here. The first thing I'm gonna do is go to the settings. You'll see we have four boxes that eventually will have this green check mark in all, and that's when we'll know we'll be done. So in settings, uh, I wanna deal with Imperial. Uh, you can see here that we're going to be dealing with palletizing. We're going to select the enable multi recipe and enable multi pick. We're going to go down here. We, you can see there's lots of options. Some of them were auto populated, but uh, for our box presence input, we've already got that set up on a sensor box sensor. And I think we're good on that for the settings, right? Yep. So for if the I go generic settings, that's a good start. And if I go back to home, you'll see we got the little checkbox. So now I'm going to go into the box, and here's where you can uh, go into your first box. It's just going to say what are the attributes. You see, it it easily lays out what dimensions you need to put into here. So we're we're dealing with these plastic bins here, and we already know that those are 10.5 inches 10.5 inches by 12.5 inches uh, we've already got an approximate payload in there and the next thing we're going to do is set label orientation so in in our case we've got the neff logos so uh, you can see on here it's got that little logo right there and if you rotate that around you can see how it switches around to whichever orientation you need, and we want it to be facing the outside, all right? So we've got the label orientation. The next thing we're gonna do is set the grip position. So now we need to actually move the robot. And so you'll see we've got the, the bin up there on the conveyor. <clears throat> we've got the cups close. So now I just need to move it into position. So, Right now, I can just simply, if I, if you watch the gripper, I'm just gonna lower it down right to where we know it's gonna get that suction. It's gonna actually mate to the top and we know we'll get a suction right there. So, we'll go back to, um, yep, back to your program. <clears throat> back in the edit the box. And, Hold the dead man switch and do set the grip position. There we go. We, we've done that so we can say OK. So now we've set that grip position and we should be all good here, right? Yes, 
sir. So now we can go back to the home and back to home again. And you see now we got that green check mark there. We're good to go on the box. Next, we're gonna go over to the pallet. And the dimensions on this, the front was 30. 30 and a half. Or 30, wait, the front. Let's see, our front was 31, oh, that's right, 31 and a half. And then 37 and a half. And then the height we measured was five and an eighth. So here's another neat thing is a variable height. So what this is saying is if our pallet is varying in height from pallet to pallet, then we can change this to basically on that first set, on that first drop, it's gonna actually wait until it hits that pallet and then it knows that's the right height. And so we wanna set a minimum. So we're just gonna do 5.75 and a max height of 5.25. And so that way it's gonna start at that max and start going down until it hits that pallet height and then we're good. So we also know we're gonna be, although we've got them over here, we're gonna be palletizing on the left-hand side. So I'm just gonna click that left and you'll see it highlights it. So it shows me sitting, in, standing in front of the palletizer about to palletize on that left-hand side. So we're good there. I go back home. We've got our checkbox in the pallet. We're gonna to go to pattern. The first pattern we're gonna to go to. So here's what's neat. We've already set our box. So I can just hit the generate and it's automatically gonna set up our the, the right dimensions of boxes. Now I wanna adjust everything a little bit here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say select all. And instead of snapping up and down, I only wanna move it, uh, let's say two inches every time I tap this arrow. So now I can just shift that pole set up and down. And now what I wanna do is I wanna give a little bit of space here. So I'm gonna do move one inch for each. And I'm gonna move that down a few. And so this is just spacing them out just a little bit because I know those rims like to have a little bit of edge. So now we've got them all spaced out. And now that arrow is showing that label orientation. So here I, I want everything pretty much facing out. I can just simply click on it and rotate it around. And now I'm orientating all of my labels. So they're all facing out except that middle one. So we've got our labels out, we've got everything spaced, and I think we're good here, right? Good on that screen. Great. So for this, we're, we're obviously, we're only stacking straight up. So we only need that one pattern, but obviously you could just add different patterns. If you need to rotate the boxes and do a pinwheel type setup, you can do that here. Uh, the, we are gonna wanna change our layers. So we know we wanna go about three layers high. And the other thing, when you go to edit layer sequence, so this is, if you had different patterns, then this is where you'd easily say, well, layer one, I wanna do pattern one, layer two, pattern two, and you wanna go back and forth. In our case, we're only using pattern one, so we'll just keep those all in line. All right, so we're good there. Am I doing good so far? Yep. All right, Sounds good. so we go back here. So now we've got our four check boxes, but these are still yellow. The reason why they're yellow is we've got to add in our vacuum. So we go into this empty port right there and I go down to my vacuum. And now in this case, I want to grip there. We're only using one zone. You can do multi-zone, but we only need two of those four cups picking up these, uh, these totes. So uh, we know we want to grip. And in this case, we want to wait until a uh, vacuum is achieved. And then we want to, uh, I think we're good there, right? That's good there. We're good there. So next we want to go into the, uh, yes, here. And we want to go to, if I remember correctly, we go to basic and set. Is that good? And here we want to do a pop-up. Oh, so pop-up. So what this right. is, is stating if we failed to pick the box, if we didn't achieve that vacuum level that we set in that previous screen, it is going to fault out and it's going to pop up a message to the operator saying there was no vacuum achieved and you know not continue to run. 
so then you're gonna also do the halt program at that point so that looks good now you do the same thing or a similar thing for the release so go back down to your UR caps vacuum and then here uh, once again zone one only but this time instead of grip we're gonna release and then it, you can also see it has the enable enable blow off we're actually going to take this down to 500 milliseconds and we're good there right yep. so now you just want to do a pop up here so this would be if for some reason we lost vacuum mid-cycle from when we picked it up to when we're placing it on the pallet um, say our vacuum lines got pinched, we lost air supply to the Venturis and we throw the box, it's gonna check to make sure that it still has vacuum when it is about to place the box on the pallet. If it doesn't, we're gonna say drop the box and we're gonna fault this system out at that time. All right, so now we've got our whole palletizing program set. We've got everything in white. The last thing we wanna add is we wanna make that conveyor start moving as well. So. We're gonna add a, let's see here, advanced, we're gonna add a thread. So the thread is going to basically run uh, parallel to this program. So in this thread, we want to add a set, no. Start with an if statement oh, on that's, here. that's right. Under advanced. If, there we go, and we're gonna say input box sensor box sensor and we're going to say if that equals and so right now the box sensor is the sensor that's actually right at where that box is so if it's reading false then we want that conveyor to to move okay so we've got if that box sensor is reading false uh it's going to start moving there we go uh and then so there you're going to set what digital output is going to control the conveyor. So I'm going to go back up to basic and go to set digital output. And we'll call that conveyor one. We're going to turn that to high. So high is on, low is off. All right, so we've got that. So then we just want to add some logic in there for when that is on we want to stop moving the conveyor just so we don't tear up the bell we're not pushing putting a bunch of back pressure on there so if you go back up to your if statement doing else yep and now we're going to yep added that i'm going to go back up to basic and do a set digital output conveyor one to off Low. Low. Yep. Yeah. And you know, in this case, our sensor is right at the end stop, but sometimes, because of physical constraints, it needs to be farther upstream. So we want the conveyor to maybe run for a quarter of a second or a half a second after it's triggered before we shut it off, so we know it's nested at the end stops. So you can go ahead and do a wait in there and do like 25.25, yep, it should be good. And we want that above the off. So you can see the flexibility, we can kind of move that around where needed um, if it was inserted in the incorrect location. So are we good to go? Should be good to go once you save it. All right, we definitely want to save this. All right, we've got it saved. And now automatic mode. So this is something that we'll show later, but basically it's saying, hey, check to make sure your pallet is empty. And right now the pallet is empty. So we're gonna say, okay. And now you'll see it'll start moving. So you'll see as soon as as soon as the bin is is picked up, then that conveyor starts moving, and as soon as the bin is in place, then the conveyor stops moving. So here's another neat thing: is so let's say you place one here, 
its place, and then we realize, uh-oh, this, this last bend is, something's wrong with it, and we've got to pull it off. So we've pulled it off. Well, we don't want to keep going at the same, you know, with thinking that one's here. And when we go to press play again, it's actually going to pop up and say, hey, is, is this correct? And we're going to say, no, it's not. We got to remove that bin. And so now when we press OK, you'll notice that it'll know that we removed one and it's going to come back and put one right in its place. So as you can see, in a very short time, we have gone from no program to setting up the box size or the bin, the, the pallet, which side we're palletizing, a conveyor, the pick operation, the layers, uh, the whole gambit in a matter of minutes. So uh, hope you enjoyed setting up a RoboTeak with NEP Automation. Thanks.